see this equation? Isn't it beautiful? Isn't it simple? You just take some sugar and you oxidize it and voila, you get your energy, right? But it's not really that simple. This is kind of like an overview big reaction and actually if I were to take a spoon and have some sugar in it and then just burn it, um, yeah, you would end up with water and carbon dioxide and you would be releasing energy, except all that energy would be in the form of heat. Now your cells, they don't, they, they don't want heat. Why would they want heat? They need stuff they can actually use. So they need a form of energy that they'd be able to like actually do stuff with so you can stay alive. So that form is actually ATP, the star of the show. Um, so to get that, there's actually going to be a lot of different steps. Now before we talk about those steps, let's also look at these activated um, carrier molecules. And these are going to be important throughout the process whenever we want to, um, say for these ones, they're all electron carriers. So we're going to be moving electrons ar ar around. Um, these are going to partake in redox reactions. So here we have our NAD+, um, and then it's going to react with some uh, protons or hydrogen ions, and then it's going to grab some electrons and carry them with it um, and to form NADH. And then after that, you want to move those electrons, move NADH, and then it goes to another part, and you want to take those electrons from it. Well, you can do that too takes away those two electrons and then you end up with the hydrogen ions and the NAD plus again. Um, so all of these are our electron carriers. Now you can also have ATP. So ATP um, is a carrier molecule, but it's not carrying electrons. It's actually um, carrying phosphates. Now, how is that important? What can we do with that? So remember how we said that anabolic reactions where you're taking small parts and combining together to make a polymer or just a, a larger um, macromolecule, you need, those are endergonic, so they require energy. So if we have energy that we can use in cells in the form of ATP, uh, like we would use here, we can actually make a polymer. In this case, we'd be making a polynucleotide, which could be DNA. Um, so you're starting off with a mononucleotide, and then we have two ATP coming in, and they're going to be broken apart, so we're going to break that last bond and make two ADP, so two phosphates in those ones. And then after that, you're going to have this high energy intermediate. So you can't just take a nucleotide with only one phosphate, a monophosphate, um, and just add it to a chain of nucleotides um, because you actually need the energy. So to get that energy to form those bonds, you need to add some phosphates to it. So now it's um, a nucleotide with three phosphates. It's in a much higher energy state. Now those two phosphates are going to be broken off again. You're going to end up with two uh, phosphate groups at the end, but then you're going to have, when you add it to your growing poly, um, polynucleotide chain, you're going to end up, um, again, they're all just going to be monophosphates, but um, you had to get that energy in in the first place from your ATP. So that is what we can use ATP for, just one example. Um, so yeah, it is very important for many things in the body. So there are three ways we can make ATP. Um, when you're making ATP, you take ADP, two phosphates, and you add a phosphate group, and you get ATP triphosphate. So you can either do substrate level, or we call that phosphorylation, which you can do substrate level phosphorylation, oxidative phosphorylation, or photophosphorylation. Um, so substrate level phosphorylation, you have um, an enzyme, and then you have a substrate that has um, a phosphate group on it, and then you have your ADP over here, and then you end up with ATP, this happens in glycolysis. We're going to look at that more in depth soon. And then we have oxidative force phosphorylation, which happens later on in uh, the cellular respiration in the electron transport chain and in chemiosmosis. So electron transport chain, we're pretty much taking our NADH and turn, um, it's going to donate its electrons to be able to pump some hydrogen ions um, into the matrix of the mitochondria. And then it's going to become NAD+. Remember, this over here is our electron carrier, right? And then over here, we're going to take, we've generated this electrochemical gradient. We're going to take those hydrogen ions and bring them back, um, back down the concentration gradient. And we're going to take, AD, that's going to, we're going to take the energy from, from that and transform ADP into ATP. Um, oh, there's actually, you don't create or destroy matter. There's actually um, another phosphate and you're just going to combine this phosphate by itself to this ADP, and you're going to end up with ATP. Um, now, pho photophosphorylation, I don't want to talk about that too much right now because we'll make a different video for um, 
photosynthesis by itself, just know that this happens in plants. There's either um, non-cyclic or cyclic um, photophosphorylation. So here we have an overview of all the steps of cellular respiration. So it starts off in the cytosol with glycolysis. So you're taking glucose and you're breaking it up into two pyruvate molecules. Now the next, what happens next, so that part is happens in all cells, whether it be anaerobic or aerobic. So if it doesn't have oxygen, then no problem, we'll just do fermentation. There can be alcohol fermentation or lactate fermentation. We'll talk more about those in a later video. Um, but then if you do have oxygen, so an aerobic respiration, then um, the pyruvate will go through like this mini prep step before it can go into the mitochondria. So that is going to transform it into acetyl-CoA. Now acetyl-CoA will go into this uh, Krebs cycle, and this Krebs cycle is going to happen inside the matrix of the mitochondria. That's like the part inside, inside. And then after that, um, we're going to take uh, the NADHs and the FADH2s that we created over here, and we're going to bring them to the electron transport chain where they're going to help pump hydrogen ions across the inner membrane of the mitochondria into the intermembrane space. And then after that, we're going to, through chemiosmosis, bring those um, hydrogen ions back down the concentration gradient, harness their energy, and make ATP over here. Um, so this is pretty much big picture. Now we'll look more in depth into each one of these.